Hello, everyone. It's Lori Staley, Addicted Stamper, with Stampin' Up. Sorry, I have a pop-up message on my screen, and I'm trying to read it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what that is. Um, okay, so we're back. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but it is uh, Lori Staley with Stampin' Up. I am the Addicted Stamper. And that just means I'm addicted to stamping. Um, but I am coming live to you today for a lunch with Lori. Um, normally I'm live on Tuesday nights at eight, but that didn't work out for me this week with lots of holiday things happening. So I decided to come on today so that I could share a few sneak peeks with you from the upcoming January through April mini catalog. And I've got two fun cards for you today. One is a fun fold and one has a cool technique that you may or may not have seen me do in the past. But please, if you're on, give me a shout out. Let me know that you're here. Hey, Corinne, I know it's an unusual time for most of my, my friends, but hopefully some of you will be able to join me. We're gonna do a little housekeeping and then we're gonna hop right into the projects. Um, I cannot believe it is December 21st. So Christmas is four days away, right? And then what we have six days after that of December. So that's 10 days left in this year. Um, and if it's been a good year, then I hope 2023 is just as good for you. And if it's been not such a good year, you've lost loved ones, you've had some difficulties that I'm hoping only the best for you in 2023, but it is coming before we know it. And that means that the new mini catalog will be coming, but you still have time to grab some items off the last chance list. There's still lots of good things available. There's still lots of good things available on the clearance rack. So if you have not checked either one of those out or it's just on your to-do list and you haven't gotten to it yet, make sure you do that before January 4th or while supplies last, right? Um, because the last chance list will be done as of January 4th. There are a few things carrying over um, that you will still be able to access. They will be online only for the most part, and uh, but you'll be able to get them, but not a lot. And I'm telling you, I just pulled all of my mini catalog products from my studio this week and realized that very few of them am I interested in getting rid of. <laughs> I have a couple BOGO sales a year that I do, and normally at this time, I'm putting stuff in those boxes and market them and everything. And yeah, there's not very much going in there this time. This was an amazing mini catalog that is retiring. And so if you haven't gotten all the things on your wish list, see if they're still available and grab them. And of course, if you do that, make sure you use my December host code. If you don't have a demonstrator that you're working with to place your order. And if you're a first time uh, purchaser with me, you'll get a free gift. But in addition, if your order is a minimum of $30, you will earn my Just Card class for the month. So these are the cards that we are having uh, for our December Just Cards. It's a great assortment, masculine, feminine, birthday, thinking of you, all that. With a minimum $30 product order, you get the card kits for free. If you're local, you can come to the in-person class on January 11th. And if you're long distance, we just ask for $4 to mail the card kits to you. So make sure if you're shopping here or the clearance rack, you don't have a demonstrator that you're working with, use that host code. That's what triggers me to say, oh, put that person on my list for the Just Cards class. And they are usually mailed out the second week of January for your long distance. So last chance, clearance rack, grab it while you can. Of course, the new catalogs are coming. And if you are in the position where you don't have a demonstrator in the U.S. that you're working with, um, then I'm happy to work with you to get you some catalogs. Just reach out to me. These are amazing as well. Lots of fun coming out of these. Beautiful stamps, beautiful papers, embellishments, bundles, you name it, it's in there. Um, and of course the celebration catalog for January and February. So in case you haven't heard, we've gotten into a routine of doing two celebrations a year. In 2023, there will be one celebration and it will be January and February. So you wanna make sure you get on board then because you get a free product from that little catalog, which is not so little. How many, I can't show you the inside of this, but this has uh, 17 pages in it of goodness. 
So you get a free product with a $50 product order. And there's also a couple in there that you get for free with a $100 product order. So make sure you're checking that out. Or as I said, reach out. Happy to get you some, um, some catalogs into your hands. And then I just want to put this out there. I'm doing my mini catalog paper share again this year. Um, I changed my paper share a couple of years ago. So let me explain to you what we do. You actually get two six by six pieces of each pattern out of each of the pretty papers in the uh, mini catalog. So a lot of paper shares only give you one. And the feedback that I got was, well, then I have to make a decision between which side I want to use. And sometimes I like them both. So this way you're getting two six by sixes of every sheet, every design in the pack of 12 by 12 paper or in the six by six papers, you get two as well so that you don't have to make that choice. So you can literally make two plus cards with your paper out of that single sheet, if you will. Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, I believe. 11 patterns coming out. So if there's 12 sheets, there's six patterns, you're literally getting um, 12 six by six sheets out of each pack of this, two of each pattern. So the cost for the all the pretty papers is 57. And then I do a specialty add on now for that, because the price is a little bit more expensive. There's some specialty, usually it's uh, foils or shimmer or something like that. You do only get one six by six piece of that, but that's not typically your something you're using as a background paper, perhaps you might be using it as an accent paper. So one usually allows you to do multiple cards from it. The cost for that is $8. So together it is $65. You can do a porch pickup if you're local to me and save postage. If you want it mailed or you're long distance and need it mailed, then there is a $9 charge for priority postage shipping to you. Um, there is a registration link that I will be posting on the video after we're done today, um, as well as some information about the projects that I'm making today. My picture won't be updated until later tonight because I wasn't home last night and hubby didn't take the picture for me. But make sure you're thinking about that paper share. It is a great way to get your hands on all the designs and see which ones you fall in love with. And then you can invest in the large pack of paper, right? Thank you guys. Hey, welcome, Betty. Hi, Carol. Hi, Corinne. Good to see everybody. Thank you for sharing. Yes, please be sure to comment. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I'm close to 1,200. I only need two more subscribers to hit my 1,200 and then I'll start working on the next 100. Um, hi, Peggy. Good morning. Nice to see you. Um, but yes, because you will be entered into the drawing for the cards that I make today, right? So that's always fun to win the cards. And speaking of winning the cards, these are the last two Christmas cards that I made this year, I think. <laughs> I think they were the last two um, that we did together last week on our YouTube channel. This one is definitely a fun fold. And we were playing with all the snowflakes, right? Both from the magic snowman and the joyful flurries. And the winner of these is Verna Freer. So I didn't see Verna hop on, but Verna, congratulations. You are the winner. And I will make sure that you get these. Put them back there so I don't get them inked up while we're playing with the new stuff today. All right. So that was all the, uh, all the um, business that we needed to discuss. Thank you for sharing. We are going to make this fun fold. And we're going to do these little accent pieces here with the stitch shapes dies. I love those dies. If you don't own those, those are kind of a staple. They have the circles, the squares. They've got some banners in there. Um, so they really are. They are found in the annual catalog. And then this paper. I pulled my colors for my flower images from the two-tone flora stamp set from this beautiful paper. This paper is new. This is one of the ones in the paper share. It's called Fancy Flora. And let me show you those. So this reminds me of an artist who's putting paint samples, right? These patterns, which I love them. They're great backgrounds little bold on one side, a little more neutral or subtle on the other sometimes. And of course it's got lots of purples in it, which is my color, right? So you, I love the purples. They're just really fun. 
great starry sky there with some orchid oasis. More purple. That reminds me of like a lily pond. I don't know why, because I know it's not blue. Oh, thanks, Peggy. Peggy, where are you watching from? Nice neutral, right? I mean, and, well, and I love this side too. Just look at that. I mean, that's pretty much a card front with a greeting, right? Pretty simple, simple stamping there, guys. And this one's also very pretty. So I love those. And then the one that I used here, this is all I have left out of my first pack of that one because I did use this. Oh, cool. I did use this for my team meeting, this particular project we did at my team meeting this year or this month at our Christmas party. So, but I do love this. And again, um, fancy flora. It is a six by six pack, as you can tell. You would get two of each sheet. So again, you wouldn't have to make a choice between which side you liked better. And it is part of the paper share if you sign up for my paper share. Two-tone floral is the brand new stamp set that's coming. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, I think it is. One, two, three, four, five, uh, two-step flowers, images in here. And you've got some greeneries and then this little accent as well. So cute, fun. That can be a cutesy stamp set. That can be an elegant stamp set. The dies that coordinate with it, of course, you know, are going to cut out all of those stamped images for you, right? So there's all the stamped images. And then it has this beautiful die cut in it. Now, here's my tip when you're using this die cut. You definitely want to build your sandwich with the die face up. Now, we're not using it on this card, but I will show you a card that I did on my Facebook page um, Sunday night, I think it was. I don't know. All the days are running together right now. <laughs> so typical sandwich, right? You got your big thick platform or plate one, then your plate two, cutting pad or plate three. Then you're going to lay your die face up, okay? And always put any length straight edge die through at an angle. One of the reasons I tell you to do that is because if you continue to do this, first of all, it's harder for it to get through those rollers. The machine's going to go clunk, right, when you roll it. But also, over time, it's going to warp your die. If you put it through it this, it this way, with this like uh, corner going through first, the pressure is more evenly applied as it rolls through. It doesn't take that big clunk to get it started or a clunk on the end. And you're not applying all the pressure straight on. So it doesn't work. And then you put your paper on top and then you put your cutting pad on top and you run it through. But again, two tips. One, run it through upside down. And of course, run it forwards and backwards a couple of times. And then make sure that it's not going through straight on. You're putting it at an angle. But it is a beautiful die. And here's the card that we made uh, Sunday night in Come Stamp Along With Me over on my Facebook page. Simple. Very simple card. We simply cut that die out, added a color behind it, did a couple labels and added some embellishments, um, but really turned out very nicely. Washington, uh oh, you got snow. Well, there you go. That's a great way to spend a snowy day. I agree. I love it. I love it. Okay. All right, so now let's grab our paper and make this happen, huh? So five and a half by eight and a half is your card base. And I forgot that somebody walked off with my bone folder here. I should have put one over here when I was done Sunday night. And I didn't. So thank goodness for thumbnails. All right. Okay. And then what I did is I took the painted texture embossing folder. And I only did a portion of it. So I lined it up right on the edge. Ran it through this way, through the die cutting machine, so that I was only going to get a portion of it because I'm going to stamp my inside greeting over here. And the inside greeting is done in Fresh Freesia and it comes from the Florets products. By the way, if you really haven't uh, gotten that 
framed for rep product line yet. Chances of forgetting that are running out as well. The bundle carried over, but the designer series paper and the Christmas greeting set did not. So you wanna make sure you pick that up. That goes away at the end of the year as well. So this just says for a special person on a special day, that's gonna go inside of our card. I always have to laugh when things go missing from my tray here at my video station because I'm, I really am usually the only one that is stamping down here. <laughs> so sometimes I think my husband must be stamp stamping when I'm not around. Oh, thank you, Peggy. I appreciate that so much. All right. So then all we're going to do on the front. Now I did score it at two and one eight. You could just fold it back on itself, right? To get your front layer. I've got a piece of that pretty paper already die cut. And I have some of the Fresh Freesia Open Weave Ribbon. Now that's in the annual catalog, right? That's one of our 2022-2024 in colors. So we're going to add a little adhesive and run this ribbon right around. I'm going to leave it to the left side a little bit more so that I have room to put my squares on. And just bring it up here and tack it down on the back. And then I am going to trim that off a little bit. No reason to have all that extra ribbon right there. And we will add some adhesive over those tails. So I'm sure they stay in place. And we're gonna mount this to the flap that we created. So who likes fun folds? This is an easy one. And then I already tied a bow. Let's see if I can crease that a little bit better. I might hop up and grab my bone folder. I love fun folds. And I especially like the ones that don't tax your brain a whole lot to create, right? <laughs> so we're going to take a glue dot. Oh, this is an older package because the glue dots are still on the roll. And I'm going to put that on its side right about there. And then I can come back in and trim those tails as well. But of course, you know, I have to play with the purple tones in that beautiful designer series paper because that, that is my color. You love fun folds, Carol? Yay. Yep, me too. Me too. Okay. So then again, those squares that I created with the stitch shapes, they don't want to come apart. We're going to stamp three of them and we are going to put these away so I don't knock them on the floor, use Fresh Freesia. And we're gonna do a little off stamping. So I'm gonna grab a piece of scrap here. That I can off stamp my images onto. Because I'm only using one color per flower. And the way we do that is we call it off stamping or generation stamping, right? So we're going to use the fresh freesia, which I've already opened, and the solid image. You can do the solid image first, or you can do the detail image, whichever is easiest for you. Just trying to figure out which way I want to put it on here, and I'm going to put it on about like that, I think. Okay, very light pale. Then I'm going to bring the detail in. And I'm going to do that full strength. Isn't that pretty? I love generation or off stamping. We're going to grab some Calypso coral. 
do the next one. You do want to clean these in between, right? Otherwise you're going to muddy your colors, even though these are all light colors. And I realize I'm a little low, so I'm gonna slide that up a little bit. And we're going to do solid image, off stamped. And put that up there. You know, that one I think I did upside down. But that's okay. It doesn't really matter, right? Because I can still put my um, center in there. And we'll put our leaves at the bottom as well. So that's the Calypso Coral. Now, on the sample card, I use uh, Pool Party, which is also in this paper. But I'm going to use Balmy Blue today. And then I want you to tell me which one you like better. So one more scrub. And off stamp the balmy blue. Get the detail image. There we go. This is a very easy stamp to line up as well. I just thought that had a little more color to it. So we have those done. We're just gonna mount those onto some squares that I hand cut with the paper trimmer uh, in Night of Navy. Oh, let's do the green before we do that. Let's do our leaves before we mount them. So this is just soft succulent, and this is done full strength. I just love the way these flowers come out. Just love it. All right, now we'll mount those. So today for me is wrap my husband's gifts and bake cookies again. I did get two batches done yesterday. And I have, I think, three or four more I want to do. How about you guys? Are you ready? What are your Christmas tasks to be finished? All right, and then we're going to mount these onto the edge of our fun fold. So this one is gonna go down first. I'm gonna line up the points, right? With the edge of the card fold. So I'm only going to put my adhesive on one side. And if you are a fan of the Tombow liquid glue, if you're the fan of um, this, uh, I was gonna call it super seal, the seal plus, <laughs> then by all means you can use that the fine tip, whatever you prefer. I lined the point at the top up with the very top edge. And again, I followed that fold down and then we're gonna put on our blue, balmy blue one. Same thing, I am gonna overlap it a little bit, but again, I'm making sure I'm staying true to lining up with the folded edge. And then our Calypso coral. So this one, so this is my edge or the side, I should say. Because if you get adhesive and then come the whole way down to the bottom edge of this one, we almost lose the, um, the leaves, the leaves. Boy, I can't talk today, can I? On the blue flower. But if you get the adhesive over here, you're going to end up sealing your card, and you definitely don't want to do that. And then the last thing that I did was I added some of the flat back pearls, which are gorgeous. 
Oh, you're making an apple pie. Very good. Yep, I'm with you, Corinne. I got a few more to go to. But I did hit the easy button because of um, those of you that watch me Sunday night. Now, I guess you would say I sprained my neck. <laughs> Playing password. I know. I know. I bet you I am the only person that ever sprained their neck playing password. Of course, I'm probably also the only person that ever broke their foot playing miniature golf. You get the idea that I am a klutz. Um, but yeah, so it's just today is the first day that I can literally do anything without a lot of pain. So I'm counting my blessings for that. Okay, so there is first project, fun fold with these cute little diamond accents. What do you think? Do you like that one? Move those stamps out of the way. And we'll switch into our second one. All right. So this one I went with the fun of the share a milkshake. This is in the mini catalog. It is perfect for Valentine's Day. You can make birthday cards with it, thinking of you cards, um, whatever you like, truthfully. So here's what we're going to do. And we're using one of the new embossing folders. This is the metal plate folder that actually, and I don't know the name of the suite yet, sorry, um, but it's the motorcycle suite. It goes with the motorcycle suite. You like the darker blue? Yeah, I like the darker blue too. Let's hold that up and you guys can tell me. But yeah, I think I like the darker blue too. It goes, it just stands out more, I think. I really liked this one before I decided to try the darker blue today. And I'm like, oh, I think I like the darker blue. <laughs> what do you think? So yeah, so we're going to make this fun card, but it's called Metal Plate is the new embossing folder. And I am using the framed florets dies for our ovals. Okay. What else am I using on here? The Celebrate, of course, comes from the Shara Milkshake. And I'm using, and I'm really hoping the dies for the Shara Milkshake are here. I might have to go looking for them. Uh, I'm using something fancy. This is going to be this catalog's go-to greeting set. I already know. I've already pulled it. I don't know how many times. Here's to beautiful beginnings and happily ever afters. Nothing fancy, just love. May the good you do come back to you. I didn't forget your birthday. I'm just stretching out the celebration. I need that one. I definitely need that stamp. Um, thank you. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Grateful for the wonderful magic of you. You matter with deepest sympathy. So great greetings. And then the something fancy dies that bundle with it are all these amazing labels, tags, whatever you want to call them a couple little accents so i think this one will get a very hard workout in my studio i feel it in my bones all right i am gonna have to go find my shape dies because somehow they're not in my kit and then i'm also using our new hybrid bundle um this is sweet citrus and i'm using enjoy the sweeter things in life on the inside of the card but this is a really cute set and it is the hybrid embossing folder with all of the citrus slices, if you will. And I'm looking for something I can put in there that maybe it'll stand out a little better for you. Let me see if I can pull out a piece of cardstock here. There we go. So you can see all that. It's got some greenery and the citrus and the citrus slices. That's going to be fun. And then the dies, of course, that coordinate. Okay, so we got leaves, we got little flower images, which will cut out this for you. And then, of course, the large citrus cut. But we're not really using that other than a greeting today, so we'll use that again sometime in the near future. If you didn't see Sunday Nights Live over on Facebook, check it out.
excuse me. Okay, that hurt. <laughs> that hurt your neck. Um, because we did some sneak peeks there as well. And then uh, I'll be live again over there tomorrow morning at 10 to do two more sneak peeks. Then I'm taking a week off. So I will not be back live with you. At least that's my intention right now. Um, until our next YouTube live after next week, which will be the week after the first. All right, let me pull out some stuff here and then I'll run for the, so they should just be next door. So we're going to die cut our oval first because we don't want to emboss first. If you emboss first and then run it back through and die cut it, you kind of, um, compress the embossed images. So we are going to die cut that out. These of course are the frame florette dies. Look, I've got some extra pieces tucked away in here. All the ones to cut out your images, your stamped images. And then we've got a few different oval frames that you can use. I'm gonna run this through the die cutting machine, which sits to my left. Try to center that and keep it up closer to the top edge than the bottom. So I have room to put my celebrate on there. And what you get when you die cut that, first of all, you get the opening, right? That you can see there, but you end up with two pieces. You end, oh, why didn't that cut? You end up with the frame itself that you can use on a different project. And you end up with the oval that's gonna be our backdrop for our ice cream cone. So now I can run the piece that we just cut the oval out of through with the embossing folder. Um, this is a 3D embossing folder, so you're going to want your specialty plate, whether it's the old machine or the new. The new machine is plate four, it's the gray. For the old machine, I think it's blue, and I don't think it's numbered. And of course, the sandwich for the 3D is the platform, the folder with your cardstock inside, and the specialty plate. But I think that is a fun pattern. That's gonna be a great overall background for lots of different scenarios, right? And then this is going to fit inside the oval and then we will build our ice cream cone, but I have to find those dies. So hold on one second. Awesome. Yes, I did. I'm gonna grab something else while I'm thinking about it. Which will be the bone folder that seems to be missing from over here. Okay. So. What I'm going to do before I start on the ice cream cone is I'm going to go ahead and mount this, but we're gonna pop this up. Can you see there's some depth and dimension there? Um, just to give us that shadow box look, I think. And these have become my new favorite accessory. These are the foam adhesive strips. Can't stop playing with them, guys. They're fabulous. So I'm just gonna pull a strip off, run it, up the side edge, trim it off, do the same thing, and repeat till I have it framed out. These are great for shaker cards, which I'm gonna be doing a shaker card in the next couple of weeks. I have it in my head. I just haven't had a chance to sit down and make sure what's in my head is actually gonna work. 
but I think it will. And I might show you two ways to make the same shaker card. We'll see. So stay tuned for that. Then just a little bit more right here. And then truthfully, I'm going to do one more strip here just because this is a pretty wide space and I don't want it to, uh, when it goes through the postal machines, if it goes through the postal machines to get um, smashed down. And then you put the leftover back on and you're ready to use it the next time. So you'll find these in the annual catalog on the same page as all the other adhesives. And uh, you'll be amazed at once you have them, how much you use them. Oh, I love it when somebody hijacks us, right? In the comments. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Isn't that fun, guys? People need to get a life. All right. So I'm going to take our card base, and this is just four and a quarter by 11. I'm going to go ahead and mount that a while. What is your favorite adhesive? What is your go-to adhesive? I'm curious. I know for me, I use a lot, just make sure I'm at the bottom, yes. I use a lot of seal and a lot of dimensionals. But like I said, this seems to have, uh, taken a fun spot in my heart lately. And I've been using a lot of these adhesive strips as well. And as you can see, once they stick, they don't really want to come back up. So you kind of want to make sure you're even and straight. There we go. And then this is going to get mounted flat. All right, now let's build our ice cream cone. You prefer seal, Tombow best. Oh, thank you, Corinne. I appreciate that. It's hard to do that and this and <laughs> watch comments all at the same time. It's a little nutty. Okay, so I have those cool milkshake dies to share with you. So we have the cone. This is what I used today. I'll tell you what, I don't know what the tape is they used to put our dies on, but wow, if they sold that, nothing would ever fall apart. Although I don't think anything falls apart with seal either. This little waffling effect die, we've got some hearts, we've got ice cream layers, three different ones, the spoon, the bowl, the milkshake cup, or no, that's another ice cream layer, milkshake cup, bowl, straw, and a cherry. Really cute set. My husband is a, well, God love him. I'm so thankful that he has slowed down on his ice cream addiction. But he was an ice cream addict. <laughs> and I want to teach you, if you haven't seen me do this technique before, I want to show you this really cool technique. Now you can sponge once you're done die cutting your cone out, right? Um, but what I like to do is I take the die with it face down and I put it on the ink pad. I grab soft suede. I probably used crumb cake. So this one may come out a little bit darker. We'll see. And then I just rub all over the die, the back of the die. I try to keep my finger out of the ink as best I can. Okay, flip it over. 
you're also kind of creating a stamp with your die and then put it on my cardstock. Then I'm going to build my sandwich for my die cutting machine, which of course is platform. Then adapter, plate two, plate three, and then another plate three on top. This cone got very, very. So the die itself gives those marks. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like when you don't use an ink pad on it. I'm just going to run it across my cleaning pad here real quick. Hey, Carol. Oh, you love my new look. Thank you. I um. Well, I do have to do social media updates because my my picture on my business page on Facebook is is pretty good. I mean, it's not pretty good. It's it's more recent than the other one. The other one was taken when my nephew was born, and he's twenty one. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, I usually don't allow my picture to be taken. But I've lost seventy pounds in the last ten months, so. I thought, what the heck, let's see how bad it is. And it actually turned out pretty good. <laughs> so here's the die without putting the ink on it. You can kind of see the hash marks in there to create the waffle cone effect, but they don't really pop out. It's cute. You can take a sponge dauber and just do along the edges, right? But I kind of like this one. Now I did use soft suede. Like I said, this one I'm pretty sure was crumb cake. If you want a little bit lighter impact, you can go with the crumb cake. Um, but this one gives us some really nice detail on the cone. It's fighting me to fold. So maybe I'm learning something. I'm learning that you fold the right side in first. Oh yes, I've done that too. <laughs> I've done that too, where I forgot what's in my craft room. Yeah, I love the dimensional strip. So there we go. So there's our ice cream cone. Again, this is what it looks like without doing that fun technique with the ink pad. But I do like that technique. I've used that a lot over the years, um, especially on baskets and things like that. It just gives you a greater level of detail. I then went ahead and I stamped in mint macaron, the ice cream, right? And I did use the dies to go ahead and cut that out. And I used, I did this one already. I used our early espresso marker, blender, I should say, blending blender to, and I don't think this is early espresso. I think this is dark crumb cake to do my chocolate chips because my chocolate, my husband loves mint chocolate chip. The other dye, tell me what you mean by the other dye, Corinne. So I'm, actually, I said early espresso marker. You can use your early espresso marker or you can use um, one of your blender pens. This is the SU-100 blender pen. I'm going to try this. And all I did was dot where the white was. You don't need to hold it long because you know these are alcohol-based markers, right? So what happens when you dot is they will bleed out a little bit. So they'll fill, even if you don't hit the center exact, they should fill. If it's a larger circle, then hold it for a beat. But these smaller ones, you really just kind of want to tap it. And that's how I got my chocolate chips for my mint chocolate chip. So this might become my husband's birthday card. Who knows? But that's how you do that.
And then this guy, I'm gonna tuck down in so he fills that opening. And this guy's gonna come up over the top. Hopefully that was the new look you were talking about, Carol, and not just my graphics and page and all of that. We're gonna go ahead and seal up the ice cream cone too. So fun. I love fun stamps, don't you? I love all stamps, who am I kidding? Addicted Stamper is my handle. And I picked that <laughs> about 19 years ago when I was just being introduced to stamping up. Um, and I just, my, my sweet mama is the one that taught me all the crafting we did when I was a child. And then she is the one that ultimately led me to stamping up and uh, what I now do for a living. I, I got in to get a discount, guys. That's it. I was getting in, getting out in three months. And that was over 19 years ago. So you just never know what you're really intended to do. And I'm so grateful for each and every one of you because if you didn't watch and enjoy stamping and share creativity with me, then I wouldn't be able to do what I do. So we're gonna pop this up with some regular dimensionals. Corinne, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure what you're asking me. So if you tell me what other die you're speaking of, I might be able to answer that for you. I just tucked that little cherry in there because the ice cream scoop actually has the slit in it. So that would be for your straw if you were making a milkshake or it can be for your cherry, which is what I'm using it for. Isn't that cute? Oh my goodness, I love it. I love it, I love it. Okay, then I've got some more crumb cake I'm gonna bring in here and a little strip of basic white. I'm gonna bring in some real red ink. And the Celebrate comes right from the um, Share a Milkshake. I wanted to say Create a Milkshake, and I knew that wasn't right. Takes a little while when a new catalog launches to get all the names right. I'm going to try that one more time. Not that it wasn't straight, but it was a little too far to the right. And I tend to do that. We're gonna mount that onto our crumb cake layer. I was brave there. I should have brought my silicone pad in to protect my work surface. Let's trim that down just a little bit. There we go. That's gonna get mounted flat. And then I'm gonna show you another trick. That right down there at the bottom. So I think these were a hidden gem in the mini catalog. The waffle die will go over the cone die. Oh, no. You could cut them separately and layer it over the cone die, but if you're talking about the actual dies themselves, I would not, not do that. Um, and I could be wrong, but I, I've never layered dies over each other to run them through the big shot because I can't imagine that it wouldn't damage one or the other. Okay, so the pearlized enamel effective basics. We have black, we have white, and we have real red. And I did play with these during the Christmas season and made berries for my reeds. Um, but I wanted some real red accent and I didn't for some reason, I didn't want to use the real red gems, right? So I have a ton of the silicone pads in my uh, studio, more than I realized I had. And so I made a whole bunch of little dots in the real red. And it's really kind of cool because the longer you hold, yeah, it is cold today for ice cream. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. My husband, um, God love him, he uh, he 
his truck had to go in today for breaks, so he was working somewhere relatively close, not really, but he thinks it is, uh, to the garage he was taken into. So he walked it, walked back and dropped the truck off this morning. He texted me, he goes, oh my gosh, it's cold out there. I'm like, that's why I told you I would take you and pick you up. <laughs> so what I did is I just, on my silicone pad, squeezed out. And I kind of count. So I get about the same size. If you want bigger, then you do bigger, right? And then you set it aside to dry. Then I took blue dots, once they were dry, like these were dry, and I just picked them up off of there and I popped them on a roll of glue dots. So I'm down to my last two on the glue dots. I'll have to put some more on, but I'm going to lay this aside so that those dry. And you can color the white one, the white enamel effects with your reinkers. I recommend that you do it with a toothpick um, because you will get less color right away. 14. Yes, you could do that and then trim it to size. Yes, you can absolutely do that, Corinne, sure. And then I just kind of squeeze the glue dot underneath and around the actual dot and put it on your project. So there's how you get your enamel dots on there. You can also do it with Tombow liquid glue. You just have to find a really easy way to release the enamel dot. Um, I usually use my take your pick tool and I use the putty end and sometimes it doesn't want to come off the putty and stick to the glue. So you have to like give it a couple of beats. So it gets a little bit of grip, if you will, on there. And then we're just going to finish off the inside of the card. I used that greeting um, again from the sweetest citrus. Enjoy the sweeter things in life. And then I grabbed a happy birthday. This is also, I think, from the fitted florette stamp set. And we'll just pop that right on the inside. So there we go. So that's with crumb cake. This is with soft suede. And this is without anything. Okay. Um, pull this out of here. So you could, as, as Corinne was asking, you could cut a layer of this out and mount it to give it a little more depth and dimension if you wanted to do that and then just trim it even with the sides of the ice cream cone. I think it'll line up nicely with the marks that are placed in there, okay? Um, or you can sponge it or, or use a sponge dauber or even a blending brush after, after you have die cut it like this, right? So you've got a couple of different options on how to give a little bit more depth and dimension to your ice cream cone. It will not be the last time I use this set, I guarantee you, because there's lots of more fun things I have floating around in my head. But I hope you enjoyed that as well as our Balmy Blue for our pool party. I think Balmy Blue, people said they like that better, um, that we did with the two-tone flora. Beautiful stamp set as well. All right, guys, that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the sneak peeks. Thanks so much for coming out and hanging out with me over your lunch hour. Um, I might do more lunch with Lori's. It's a little bit easier for me since I'm working from home now um, to, well, working from home, I do this full time, um, to do it over lunch, then sometimes at eight o'clock at night. So we might be moving, but stay tuned for more information on that as we get into the new year. And I will be back tomorrow morning on my Facebook channel 
Um, and that's just Lori Staley, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. You can find me over there. And at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time for two more sneak peeks. If I don't see you before the holiday, have a fabulous Christmas. Be safe. Enjoy the new year. Enjoy family and friends, some downtime, whatever it is that's going to make your season special. And I will look forward to stamping with you in 2023. Take care, guys. If you're interested in the paper share, I'll put the link up in the, in the description of the video in a little bit so you can check back there. Have a great one. Bye.